Hey, Refinery, uh, here with uh, Chris Ierly. And those that are in middle school, you might not know who Chris is. So, uh, Chris, how long have you been working with the high school in Refinery? 12 or 13 years. Uh, that's, a, that's a long time. I know. You, you think I'd be done with high school in four. But, <laughs> um, but you may know his kids, Tyler, uh, Megan, or, or Kyle, but you probably most definitely know, know his wife, Tammy, because she's honestly the celebrity of the family, right? She's Absolutely. Sparks director. She's uh, the kids' choir director and, and VBS. She's always in the skits. That is uh, Chris and his family. Uh, but but he's here because it, I really respect how how he approaches money and um, you know I don't like I said last week I don't have the best habits of handling money so I want to surround myself with people that that know more than I do and smarter than I am and so we've been talking about this the series of of money and, and treasures storing our treasures up in heaven um, and that money is is just a tool that we use. To glorify God, it's just a tool that we use to to worship Him, to point people to Him. Um, but uh, you know, and we've talked about these practical steps of approaching money because we want to deal with the practical in 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 uh, holistic discipleship. We talked about media. We now we're talking about money. Let's just get going. So, Chris, uh, we saw last week the parables um, of, of money and talking about money whether it's storing treasures up in heaven, talking about moths and vermin, um, you know, doing it if it's treasures on earth and whatnot. But also the digging deeper talked about how it was a really weird parable that um, showed a, a very worldly perspective of money, that you use money to just gain influence and friends here, right? It was weird because it was an, a negative example. There was no positive example in, in the parable. Yeah. And so, um, but then we also read in, in 1 Timothy that the the love of money is, is the root of all sorts of evil. And so um, how do we reconcile all these ideas about money and scripture? Um, and how do we appropriately handle money? Great question. And I'm glad we start off with the easy ones. <laughs> um, no, I, I think... Uh, I want to take this back to a, a concept that we see a lot in scripture and then, you know, see how that plays out for today. And that's really the simple concept of, of being a steward. So in a lot of the English translations, we see that word all the time about being a good steward of the gifts God has given us or um, being a trustworthy steward of, of the relationships that God has handed to us. So it's this concept of, of being a steward, which is not a word we use a lot today. This is not something that like we just bring up in everyday language. Uh, I think the easiest way to think about it is really from the medieval times. When you think about families that would uh, essentially own castles and taking care of a castle was often a challenge and it took somebody to organize that and there would be a steward uh, of, of the castle and that their responsibility was to take care of it for the family. So they would you know, uh, not necessarily do all the work themselves but be responsible for making sure all the work that got done as well as taking care of the, the possessions of the family but not in a real negative kind of connotation. It was a trustworthy person. It was kind of a right-hand man kind of thing. Um, so much so that as the generations of the family lived in the castle, the, the steward family would also pass down that job generationally. So they would be together for years. Even to this day, there's still a few castles in, uh, in Europe where it's the same steward that, uh, you know, from the family line of stewards for generations. Um, taking care of that. So this this concept of taking care of something in a trustworthy manner that has been that is not yours or that has been given to your care um, is really what we need to focus on. Um, so you know that's the kind of positive aspect of it of of being a good steward of the gifts God has given us, and that can be money, time, you know, you know, skills, talents, that sort of thing. But then there's this concept of the, the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil. So if we're to take care of the money God's given us, which means we have to put some effort and some time and, and things into it, but also we're not supposed to love money. So where, do, where does that come in? And the way I think about that is the concept of being obsessed. Um, we can't obsess about money and earning money and, and being rich or you know that sort of thing. We need to... Uh, understand what the role is we have of taking care of that money and then be able to uh to do that well so the the best analogy i can come up with and it's one that a lot of people probably aren't going to like um is the concept of homework right to be a good student 
uh, you do your homework, you do it well, you do it on time, but when it's done, it's done, and you can, you know, then head off to sports practice or go play video games or go shoot hoops in the driveway, whatever you're going to go do. Mm -hmm. um, being a good steward of money is very much the same way. There's some very practical things to do with money, uh, but it's, again, we need to do those things well. We need to do them kind of on time, but then when we're done with that, we can we can be done with it and go do other things. And that's really what I keep in my head as far as how to not be obsessed with money and kind of balance that we need to do the right thing, but we also need to, to stay away from that love of money. Yeah, because you could get to the point, like maybe it's not even spending the money that you love, but it's the collecting the money, the Scrooge, if you will, that like you're so obsessed with how to collect it and, and categorize it, make sure it's going the right place. Like you might even be doing it trying to think that you're, glorifying god with that but you've all of a sudden put that money on a shelf as an idol right absolutely and uh the older you get and the more money you have that you have to do those tasks for the the more of a danger that is and really it's a it's kind of just a a, a weekly or monthly struggle that you have to watch and make sure that you're using your time and and thought processes appropriately and not and not really you know go overboard really like because there are times where it takes hours like there like there's some weeks where I, you know i have to sit down for four or five hours to really handle the finances for the family but i also need to be able to when i'm done with that put it down and you know go watch oak island with the family yeah <laughs> um he just threw his obsession in there uh, <laughs> um but uh so let's get to the practical steps for you know because there's a lot of things about money that, that middle schoolers are going to go, this doesn't have anything to do with me. So so let's say you are a middle school student and maybe you have a babysitting gig or uh, some birthday money or some sort of small income that comes in occasionally, right? Um, let's say grandma gives you uh, that crisp $20 bill for your birthday. What do you, what do, you do with it now? Good question. So again, like, uh, let's take a look at what scripture says and then make sure that we align that with what the practical advice is for today. So when we look uh, at the very first thing, which is going to be the concept of giving, we go all the way back to the Old Testament and we see um, early on where, uh, you know, uh, the tribes were called to, to give of their first fruits, right? So they were called to, to give a tenth or a tithe, and that's a word we use in church all the time is a tithe which literally just means a tenth, yeah. 10%. Um, and so they would take the first part of their, uh, um, of their harvest and, and give that to the priests. Um, that's literally how the priests got some of their food as well as the sacrifices that the priests would help do. I mean, if you really look in the Old Testament, the priests were basically butchers. Um, yeah. Like that was like probably 90% of their job. Uh, but you know, that, that, those, that food and that meat coming coming from uh, you know the tribe that they were in, in charge of essentially is how they would get their food so giving was an extremely important part of of life and so that is something that that concept has continued on because the church doesn't need uh, a calf anymore right the church church needs to pay the electric bill so mm -hmm. that same concept we give we give 10 percent right off the top so 20 dollar bill two dollars to church no you know easy math there not a problem but that still leaves $18 left, right? So we have we got to figure out what to do with that next. So uh, the next thing we go to is is savings, um, and uh, this is you know we can look at scripture, Proverbs 21:20. 20, uh, Precious treasure and oil are in a wise man's dwelling, but a foolish man devours it. Again, we don't have precious oils today, and we don't use words like devour very often. <laughs> uh, but this is a very basic concept. The wise man uh, saved. Uh, along the way and has resources available to him where the wise man he sent or the foolish man just spent it all right like just hey i got money in money went out like it's the, the whole like burning a hole in my pocket kind of thing yeah they've planned what they're going to spend their money on before you know they've gotten that paycheck even right yeah and <laughs> i've i've done that in the past i'm like you know hey i'm going to get this and this and the problem that i've had in, in the past before i really kind of figured out you know at least sort of figured out this money thing is uh, i've spent the money twice Ooh. like because you're spending it in your head and you forget savings uh and so what i recommend with savings and you know following the the precious treasure being a wise man there is is 50 percent. so of that 20 dollar bill you got 10 dollars of it goes to savings and that might seem like a lot like hey grandma just gave me 20 i gotta give up 10 for 10 dollars of this to to savings but let's talk about what that savings means so i recommend splitting that savings in this case into two fives 
and five dollars of that being a more long term not quite sure what it's for yet savings but that you know that could be books in college it could be a huge trip that you're gonna do you know sometime down the road it could be it could be something big mm -hmm. and then the other five dollars is a more short term savings goal so this is something that you put a name on it and and save for it new pair of shoes new controller for your playstation new video game new basketball new you know whatever it is that, that you want it's an item that you need to save for so you go ahead and put a name on it even put a note you know down in how much money it is twenty five dollars fifty dollars and and save for it so you split that savings in half so um so half of the money from grandma goes to savings and then you split that half into two halves and uh you know it goes into those two different savings buckets okay um that leaves eight dollars left of this twenty dollars from grandma so because you already gave two to the church you gave two to the church yeah. ten to savings eight dollars left so that's just spending money um you know in middle school i don't know you know what kind of expenses you have but this is like you know having your pocket to go buy you know culver's ice cream or go to the gas station grab a soda during the summer or you know at some point when we can you know more freely go to movie theaters again you know you want to buy popcorn well, i don't know if eight dollars is enough to buy popcorn at a theater but um <laughs> it'll yeah. get you in the theater maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe on a matinee um but yeah that uh that and that's the way that I, I divide it up and, and because this is irregular income as we would call it it's just kind of like when you do the babysitting job or maybe you clear snow or rake leaves mm -hmm. or mow lawns or whatever um you just you divide that money what we call ad hoc just at the time that you get it you you do the math and you break it up um sometimes it might require going to the bank because a 20 dollar bill you're not going to rip it into pieces you actually need to break it up into smaller bills yeah we recommend do not rip your 20 dollar bill into pieces we're yeah. not saying that no no you need to <laughs> you need to get some ones and some fives um uh but yeah that's that's how that's how i would handle that uh that that money coming in in a, in a junior high middle school time period but what about that thank you note to grandma she she gave you twenty dollars and she expects like something that's worth twenty dollars right and that thank you note, thank you grandma for the twenty dollars i spent it on this like what's the deal you know i i obviously i don't know everyone's grandma yeah uh but i know <laughs> i know a lot of grandmas that'd be pretty proud of getting a, a note back that says hey grandma thanks for the twenty dollars i i gave to god i put i put some into savings and uh, I use the rest to go out and have some have some fun with my friends. Um, that's going to show that you're really thinking through how to handle that money. And who knows, you know, maybe if Grandma's nice and she's <laughs> proud of you for handling your money that well, you get more next time. Maybe. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's say now you are, let's say, 16 years old because that's when you get the license, right? Get the car, more independence, um, maybe a, a, a job, a more consistent income. Um, how is this different and what would you suggest of, about approaching money in this way? So it, things change a little bit. Percentages don't change, but some of the details do. So let's say you, you're getting a job at, you know, well, the, the old KBC place was Rogan's. The new KBC place is, is Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but the first thing I would say is if you're 16 and you have a job, get a checking account. Um, it's probably going to come with a debit card. Uh, well, that's probably a, to a topic for a different time. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's, it, get a checking account and do direct deposit. This is a simple form you fill out and your paycheck goes directly into your checking account versus coming to you and then you have to go to the bank and deposit it. Or you can now use the app and take a picture and deposit it. But either way, there's no action for you to take. It ends up available to you in your checking account um, at 8 a.m. the morning of payday. Uh, and then, you know, from there, we're going to do the same percentages, 10, 50, 40. Uh, the one difference being that 10% is going to be on what we call the gross, which is the the overall number of uh, what the paycheck was prior to taxes coming out. Okay. So taxes get pulled out of every of every paycheck. Uh, it's state income tax, federal income tax, and, and FICA. Um, you don't have to worry as a 16-year-old about the state and federal income tax, but FICA you can't get away from. They that's, get you. That's Social Security. Um, but so let's say you work at nine dollars an hour and you worked nine hours on that last paycheck, so that's eighty-one dollars. Uh, you're going to go ahead and, and pay the tithe off that eighty-one. In this case, that's eight dollars and ten cents. I always recommend rounding up versus rounding down. Mm -hmm. uh, God told, calls us to be generous, um, so go ahead and be generous in this case and, and go ahead and give nine. Uh, is it would be my suggestion. Um, 
but then the 50 and 40%, uh, we're actually gonna take that off of the net or the amount the paycheck actually was that was deposited. So this is after the taxes were taken out. So in this case, just for easy math, we're gonna say that there were $11 in taxes taken out, so it's a $70 paycheck. So we're gonna give $35 into savings, which we would split in half, so that's $17.5 into long-term, $17.5 into short-term. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You get you're keeping all that straight in your head, yeah, right? It's up here. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and then uh, the other amount would be thirty-five because that's half of half of seventy. But you have to minus the nine dollars that we already gave to tithe, mm -hmm. so that leaves twenty-six dollars left. Okay. So that's twenty-six dollars into spending. Uh, and then in this case, that might have to pay for part of like your cell phone if you're responsible for paying for that, or there might be other uh, other you know fees that you have to pay, you know whether it be to your parents because you are splitting a Spotify account or you know whatever those things are yeah. that you have to deal with. But that would ideally come out of that spending amount. So let's say that you've got you know ten dollars in in month in in fees that you have to pay to your parents or whoever out of that. That leaves sixteen dollars left in your pocket to go hang out and and have fun with and put gas in your car if you have to or yeah. you know that sort of thing so yeah the more money the more problems you have <laughs> as the the great scholar p diddy <laughs> said more money more problems but uh so a part of that is um you know some of these students graduate high school they, they're faced with uh student loans and, and debt right and um and that's a, a trap that so many of us get get stuck in because of um, you know, just we're told that's okay. We're told that debt is, is something that we all have, right? So how do you think we should approach the ugly word of debt? Debt is, a, debt is tough. Uh, yeah. And like you said, it's normalized in today's culture. Uh, every car commercial assumes that you're going to make payments. Uh, every guidance counselor you talk to in school is going to assume you're just going to take out loans for school. Uh, credit cards just to make it sound like it's the normal thing to have credit cards. So how, yeah, the question is how do we deal with that? Because mm -hmm. it, society says it's normal. Uh, the best word I can say is debt is undesirable. Uh, and we see that in Proverbs twenty two seventeen, the last half of that verse, the borrower is slave to the lender. Uh, the, the problem with, with debt is that once you have debt, that becomes your priority for, for what you're spending your money on. So now you're losing that weekly or monthly decision about what to spend money on because the first thing you have to do is pay your auto loan and pay your school loan and, you know, pay your mortgage and, and, you know, pay your credit card debt. So it takes away the freedom that you have as far as decisions you want to make, because those decisions are already made for you from, from having to pay back that debt. And it takes away from your ability to really think through how God wants you to use that money because you made a decision, you know, before that says, I really want that more expensive car and now you have car payments on it and, and now you can't be as generous with the money that, that God's trusted you with. So, uh, you know, I, I recommend steering clear of debt as much as possible. Um, it's a challenge in today's culture and with school, college being so expensive. Uh, but it can be a side, a side conversation, but there are ways to, to creatively think through college and, and how to get to that next phase. And, in life without having to take on, you know, I think the average that I've read recently is like $50,000 in debt. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there, there are ways to be creative around that. Yeah. Debt is, it's one of those things that like I read that proverb and uh, the thing I think about it is uh, Creech and I had paid off the truck a couple years ago. And, and when, when I got mailed that title, uh, because before that the title was at the bank, right? The bank owned my truck. Um, and, and I didn't think it would be that big of a deal, but I just sat there looking at the title going, the truck is mine. Like I've been driving someone else's truck this whole time. And so now when I start that car, that truck up in the morning in cash money, like I'm saving money at that point. Cause I'm not paying someone else to drive my truck. And so it's just incredible of the decisions that we make. We may feel like we're, we're making decisions that. Um, you know, are, are creating a better time right now, but they're going to affect the long term, right? And they're going to affect down the road like crazy. 
Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, when Tammy and I paid off all of our debt except for the the mortgage, the house, um, it was a freeing feeling. Like uh, for us, we were able to take a vacation with the whole family to California. First time we'd ever done a vacation like that. Um, because we just simply didn't have the the funds to do it when we had all that debt that we were carrying uh and then uh you know kind of a fun one again right at the time of it was uh the time of paying off the debt was the year that the packers and bears played in the nfc championship game and okay we still had a, a big tube tv and it wasn't even that big it was <laughs> it was big because it was a tube tv not because it was a big screen um and uh, we bought a flat screen TV so we nice. could watch the game in HD. And it was it was not a huge TV by any stretch of the imagination, but it was it was something that was nice and we could afford it. And it was uh, uh, it, it's actually kind of recommended to do something like that, like have a small splurge to do when you pay off that debt. Mm. Um, ideally, you don't go into debt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but if you if you're stuck in a spot where you ended up in debt, you know, it's like plan a little small splurge for yourselves as like a reward for like getting out of it because it's it's tough work to get out of debt so how was it to to watch your your bears lose in high definition <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah it, it's sad yes <laughs> yeah so um i think it's so great that we can have these conversations and and i want to encourage you to um you know reach out to me send me a, a message or send chris a message uh about like hey we'd like to see maybe like a an elective of some sort we meet um over the summer or something and go through uh, a financial peace uh type of curriculum or, or a small group that's focused on this because we want to do holistic discipleship where we we want to encourage you in in the real life things that are going to affect um life down the road because decisions that you make today and habits that you build more, more so even the habits you build Thanks again, Chris, for, for being here and, and for sharing with us and with uh, the different home groups. Uh, next week, we have Blacklight Dodgeball, so uh, we will not have a lesson for next week, so sign up for Blacklight Dodgeball. But um, other than that, we will see you guys next week. <laughs>